going forward, we want to talk about and kind of try to explain this situation that's currently going on with flipping Tremaine and Denim Tears. Because I'm still confused as to what this whole point of it is and why this man can't seem to let go of the experience that he had over there at Supreme. So if you don't know, um, Tremaine Emery from Denim Tears um, was at one point the creative director of Supreme. And then, you know, unfortunately he had to step away from the role because from what I could deem to be, it was like a miscommunication, a breakdown in communication, a breakdown in trust, whatever it may be. And he had to obviously leave. Uh, months after, he then explained that the reason why he actually left was because he felt like the company was racist. They weren't paying attention to what he had to say. They weren't trying to put out his ideas. And essentially, he's been now on a one-man campaign to convince the world that Supreme is a racist institution. And, you know, I think the phrase he used is systemic racist. Um, so racism racism runs through Supreme, which is an odd thing to say considering, you know, what Supreme have done over the years the people they've kind of platformed, represented. And I guess he was mostly saying it because of the head office. Because I think he said the head office didn't really reflect what the brand image was like. The brand image is very, quote unquote, multicultural and maybe very diverse, but the actual people in the office themselves aren't so much so, which is why he thinks he had an issue with them and why they had an issue with him and why he wasn't able to get his ideas out. One of his ideas, I think, was a controversial idea regarding having some sort of like slavery imagery on a T-shirt. It was actually a collaboration with this artist called Alpha Jaffa. Um, unfortunately, Supreme weren't too fond of it and they said no. And of course, that started a whole spiral of issues, eventually leading to Tremaine leaving. So it seemed like he kind of got over it he sat down with Angelo back and had a really good interview. I obviously reviewed it on here and I was really um, impressed by how much he seemed to have grown and kind of got over it. He seemed to be very understanding of what happened and kind of accepting the bit of responsibility himself. And, you know, basically he wasn't, he kind of seemed like he let go of the whole like supreme racism is racist thing. Well, it seems like he's right back on it because now he's releasing these hoodies um, which have supreme no they have america is, is systemically racist all over them which is meant to be like a nod to like an old supreme hoodie from 2007 which is collaboration with arthur jaffa and he's now got all of these um posters i think plastered somewhere around new york which is obviously a kind of flip on what supreme do which is also flip or lifted from the artist barbara kruger which says systemic racism controls america so this has become like his thing now right he's got all these he's got all these posters plus all over the place and it seems like it's him kind of reawakening or restarting that whole beef and that whole issue he's had with obviously with supreme he also released this video that features a rubik's cube um covered with the same america systemic racism controls america slogan on it let's play the video The guy finished the Rubik's Cube and it says systemic racism controls America. Now, I just don't understand what the point of this is. Like, haven't you got over it just yet? Like, what's the actual issue here? Is this actually just an, an artistic expression that's more so akin to the work of Barbara Kruger and less to do with Supreme? Or is this another dig at his former employer because he feels like he was shafted? Because from what I can understand, from everything I've read, from everything I've listened to, I've listened to a lot of him speaking, whether it's on podcast or video, from what I've been able to see and ascertain and read between the lines is also taking into account some of my experiences that I've had in working in a corporate world and knowing how people move and whatever it may be. It just seemed to be like a breakdown in communication. It seemed to be that there was, an, there was a particular point I remember Tremaine talking about where he said um, he didn't feel like James Jebbia kind of had his back. And maybe he wasn't told beforehand that some of the projects he was working on were cancelled. They kind of like let it go until the very end, until they told him. And then at one point they kind of moved on and maybe they kind of went to somebody else to kind of get their view. And I, thought he, I think he also mentioned there was a, a kind of internal friction going on with that lady called Erin McGee who, who had a brand called Made Me. I'm not sure if it still exists, but allegedly Erin McGee kind of felt like she should have got the job. And I think 
Tremaine even kind of described her as maybe being racist because she didn't like him and didn't warm to him because she probably thought she was more deserving of the role um, that Tremaine got and of her being internal uh, with her being already working there because she's already worked there for like 20 years I think um, Erin McGee she probably thought oh she kind of got overlooked and that also created a bit of tension but in general just from a him point of view it just didn't feel like a good fit anyway to begin with I was I liked the I liked the hire I thought the hire of Tremaine Dare was interesting because of the work he did at Denim Tears. I thought it was a it was a forward thinking type of move, especially considering how quickly Denim Tears has grown. But when you actually deep it, when you actually kind of analyze it really, Denim Tears mission statement has zero to do with Supreme. It would have actually made more sense if he did a collaboration with Supreme, like a little capsule collection or something, as opposed to him being the full-time creative director. That never really made any sense, especially when you consider how booming his brand is. To, to, to have like a nine to five, basically, on top of running your own business is a bit much, especially when you consider his brand, you know, he doesn't really, it's not like he's doing the most challenging items in the world. It's mostly t-shirts and sweats people that actually care about. Yes, I know he has some other cut and sew pieces, but to like, it, you know, it's hard to kind of split your resources or your talents or your creative skills across those two brands. So it doesn't really make any sense to have him there in the first place. But again, at the time, it seemed a bit forward thinking. It seemed fresh, but it didn't work out. And that's perfectly okay. I just don't understand why he's trying to convince the world that Supreme is racist just because it didn't work out for him. Because it sounds like there was a breakdown in communication on both sides. So if that's the case, and maybe, you know, because it does happen sometimes, I'm not sure about you, but I know it happens. It hasn't happened to me, luckily, but it does happen in the workplace where sometimes someone gets hired, they're in a great fit, they seem like they'd be a good fit, the interview goes well, they get hired. Then when they start working there, people start to realize, oh shit, this person actually isn't a great fit. It does happen. It can happen on either side. Maybe the the, the company says, hey, we're not a great fit. Or maybe you decide, I don't really like where I'm working at. That can happen sometimes. And I think that might happen to him, right? Maybe, you know, being a part of the Supreme team and the Supreme family from the outside was cool. But then when you get on the inside and you see how the sausage is made, no bread and sure, suddenly you're like, mm, I'm not really a big fan of this anymore, which is understandable. But I would just like to know, if you're Tremaine and you have such a problem and you have such an issue with Supreme and it being like systemically racist and shit, just as, a, just as an observation, again, it doesn't matter this sort of stuff because I don't really care about this sort of thing. But it is an interesting question to ask. If you're like dead set on Supreme being racist and shit and then you end up marrying a very Caucasian lady, who allegedly he met at Supreme, doesn't that like throw up some questions? Especially when your brand is like very much like, I wouldn't say black power, but it's it's kind of like a black centric brand. He probably would argue against that because he happens to be a black man designing clothes. That's what it is. But he kind of leaves with race as like a selling point, which is always so funny because you got all these like pasty white kids in New York somewhere wearing that cotton reef hoodie. And that cotton reef hoodie is extreme. I wouldn't say it's racially charged, but it has racial connotations to it. So to see all these kids just wearing that cotton reef hoodie and sweats like it's just a thing, despite the, you know, the iconography and the messaging behind it being very deep rooted and being, especially in, when it comes to American slavery and stuff, it's just interesting. But that would be an interesting question to ask him. Not again, probably wouldn't answer the question. Doesn't really matter who you fuck, who gives a fuck really. But if you're going to be the rah-rah black power guy and you're going to call a brand systemically racist, you went into this alleged racist company and you end up finding the love of your life there. You end up marrying. So how racist is it really? Was she not? Was she the only not racist one there? Is James not the, is James Jebbia the racist one? Like how far does racism go? Because allegedly other black people work there. Would they, would they accuse the company of being racist? Or would they just say it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a, what you call it? It's a little bit of a hard place to maneuver because I'd imagine from the outside looking in, I'd imagine James Jebbia, who's still very much involved in Supreme, who still runs the brand day to day, probably finds it very difficult to relinquish control. Probably isn't good at delegating, right? There's probably a lot of that sort of stuff going on. There's probably not a lot of like direct communication 
because people have been there for so long, things kind of get left unsaid. Maybe feelings kind of get hurt. Maybe people's responsibilities get taken away. Maybe they don't have much ownership. Maybe there's not a lot of room to grow because people don't leave the company. Like, for goodness sake, that Erin McGee woman, I've known her. I've known about her ever since I used to post on Hypebeast forums and she's still there. So I'm sure there's other people like her who have been there 10, 15 plus years. So you can't really progress in a company that keeps, you know, it's quite lean. It's a small operation when no one leaves. So it's hard to really kind of develop and evolve your career. So maybe it was always like that before even Tremaine even arrived there. So, you know, maybe you should do a research and kind of find out about the working environment. Maybe you don't know until you get there, but you get there. And I think part of, part of working in the corporate world is understanding how to navigate the corporate world, like quickly realizing, okay, cool. This is how they work. This is what they expect. This is what they don't expect. This is what they put up with. So don't put up with like negotiating and navigating that is an essential part of being successful. That's why Virgil Abloh was such a G, RIP to the great, because he was able to work with these big corporations, these big brands, um, you know, these big conglomerates and stuff while still kind of doing his own thing. But he basically was able to do the thing that Kanye couldn't do, right? Which was work with corporations and kind of, you know, be able to get his ideas off on that grand scale. And I think, to be completely honest, it's probably a more of a failure on Tremaine that he wasn't able to do that, as opposed to Supreme stifling him, silencing him, not giving him a voice. It's like, because they hired you. They hired you. They probably paid you a good salary. They gave you a prestigious position, which probably gave you a lot of clout, I'm assuming. I don't know how valuable that is, but still it kind of gave it to you. Loads of good press. Like they hired you in the first place. So how systemically racist can they be if they hire you? Were you like a token hire then? Does that does that go back to what Kanye said when he said like you were a, what did he say? Like he, he, I think Kanye said that to him, right? Kanye said something like he was a token black hire or something after Virgil passed. That was the next kind of person all the brands were going to hire to seem like they were like with the culture and shit. Like, because if you, if you admit Supreme systemic racist, then you also have to admit that you got used, that you was like a puppet. You were basically a pawn that they use in order, you know, a, a plant, as people like to say, to kind of, you know, um, change the message or change how Supreme was viewed. Is that the case? If that's the case, that's also kind of bad. So I don't know. I look at this stuff and I'm just like, why? We don't need this. It doesn't really do or say anything. But then again, to be fair to Tremaine, this could also be more to do with the Barbara Kruger thing than Supreme. Because Barbara Kruger originally was the person known for um, that particular font that you see from Supreme in that box logo. I think it's like a Helvetica font or something. Um, and a lot of her artwork, you know, she uses words to kind of get across a message, to get across a feeling, to say something about the world that she's living in. And maybe that's what Tremaine is doing. And obviously it just happens to be he worked Supreme, so it kind of lends itself. And obviously he worked with Arthur Jaffa, somebody who went to work with me as Supreme. But I just feel... Like it's unnecessary. Um, I wouldn't say it's tasteless. It's just unnecessary, really. And I think the guy needs to move on and just kind of, you know, let bygones be bygones. It is what it is. But let's actually check the comments. I'm curious to see what people are saying in the comments about this whole thing because it seems like a gigantic waste of time. Um, another one says, someone says here, you're not supreme. Cool message, though. Another one says, I ain't gonna lie, bruh. I seen your lady. And if that's what these clothes attract, I don't even need to be in this brand. Watermelons made me stop checking the site, but your wife is, yo, okay, this is too much. Your wife is so weak. I can't even super the, so what? You you have to, you have to want to fuck his wife to buy his clothes. What? People on the internet are bizarre. Rejected idea. Another one says, this is powerful. All the naysayers are systemic racists showing, okay, this is insane. If you don't like the idea, you're also systemically racist. Okay, I guess I am too, right? I'm systemically racist, cool. Um, another one says, that looks like a high sparrow from Game of Thrones. Make him uncomfortable. Come on, Tremaine. Need it, raw eyes. You have a white wife, someone says here. Let's see what the comments are saying here. Don't care, your wife is white. I love this, Tremaine Emery, someone says. Business is business. I like what you stand for. No one's buying a shirt with chicken or watermelon. Whoever thought this was a good idea needs to be fired. Someone says here, corny ass brand. If you buy this hoodie, you're a clown. Womp womp, someone says. Um, let's see the other stuff. Actually, let's actually go to his page. 
because sometimes his page is a bit more charged than most places. Whoa, look at that. Two, look at the comments. 200, 300. Okay, cool. Let's go back. Let's go to this image and see how what the comments are saying. 262 comments. You're the worst thing to happen to Supreme. And yay, yo daddy. Bloody hell. Some white kid here. Is it? I don't know if he's white or not. You're the worst thing to happen to Supreme. Another one. Performative ass, uh, performative ass art. Bro is happily married to a white woman. Again, that shouldn't matter. That doesn't matter who he's married to. But it is interesting, just as an observation. When you are a rah-rah black guy and you're using your brand as a platform to kind of, you know, speak about race issues and to kind of forward the black message, whatever you're trying to do with the brand, who knows? Maybe he will dispute that. It's just interesting. You know, again, it doesn't matter. No one gives a fuck who you stick your dick in. It really is no one's business, but it's just an observation. And I would actually like to hear him speak about that. I'd actually like to hear him kind of, again, he probably doesn't need to. It's no one's business, but it would be interesting to hear his point. Like how you have this brand that you're always shouting to the rooftops about, especially in terms of it representing black people and shit and their struggles, especially in America. Um, with you kind of trying to tell the story of slavery in a modern way, with you trying to, you know, retell maybe some of your history through the clothes, whatever it may be, blah, 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 blah. How do you then do all that and then be a, you know, just a question. Doesn't really matter, really, but it's a question. Another person says, nothing says fighting systemic racism than 700 pound chicken bone necklaces. Sir, don't you mean Zionism? Another one says, I think it's interesting how you, to portray your work. Most great artists know how to remove themselves from their body of work. No right or wrong about telling a story, whatever feels the best. The haters can't help but watch and the people who love you will support naturally executed well tea. But that's, isn't that criticism at the beginning? You're almost saying what everyone is saying. He can't separate his own personal vendettas, agendas and experiences from the brand. And it's maybe damaging it, especially because people will keep viewing him as being bitter and being petty and just not be able to move on from this whole affair, even though maybe that's not the case. Another one says, and you profit from it. Did he reply to that one? No. Another one says, fire, fire. Why not spell it America KKK? Missed the opportunity there. Another one says, systemic racism, systemic racism controls America and pays your bills too. Another one says, touche. All because of Zionism and Illuminati. Clap, clap, clap. Illegal business to controls America. Bro married a white woman. Thank you for making them accountable. Yet your wife works at Supreme. Yeah, that's that's the funny thing. Allegedly, that wife that he met worked at Supreme. That's the funny, that's one of the, you know, although it was a bad experience, it kind of went good because he would met love of his life. But it's an interesting place to be at, really. It's just interesting because you're doing all this stuff and you're kind of making her job hard, isn't it? How she, you know, it's kind of making her job a bit uncomfortable, you would imagine, right? Tremaine, you have yet to miss aesthetically pleasing representative of you, not just your story, but everyone that represents you. This gets me excited, works worked up and out of bed in the morning. You're getting you're you're getting excited and ready to go out of the bed in the morning because someone made a hoodie. Okay. Um, real question can they sue him for this? Generally asking, I guess who knows? My dog. It, limitation is the formest imitation is the, is the highest form of flattery i hate i hate that quote because it depends who's copying you sometimes imitation can ruin the original work so that's not necessarily true damn that's cocky the boss la rage t woo this is absolutely hilarious lol bravo anyway let's see how it transpired let's see how it goes um i find it kind of corny kind of lame personally just as lame as kanye when he was doing all that tremendous stuff i thought that was super dumb and redacted and yeah i won't be buying any of this shit it's obviously not for me but i'm sure there's people out there that'll like it i just just like the guy to move on and kind of just do great work that he's doing with his brand he doesn't want to move on he still feels a little bit hard done by and he's gonna go keep on talking about this until the cows come home in it i guess it is what it is i guess it is what it blood claw is uh, we've also got some more comments here, actually, courtesy of Stay Grounded TV. Let's actually see these ones. Stay Grounded TV also reported on it. Let's see what they say in their comments. Um, they say here, um, I fuck with Tremaine Heavy, but Supreme isn't racist for not allowing him to put a slaves on a t-shirt. I agree with this. Not only is that insensitive, it wouldn't want to see it on any shirt. I def wouldn't want to see 
under Supreme. If anything, that would be racist if they released those under the brand and profited from those designs. It's just not necessary, really, isn't it? And maybe the Supreme that was quote unquote independent, maybe they would have done it. Maybe they would have taken that risk. But Supreme that's been bought by what VF Corp or whatever it may be, they're probably a bit risk averse. They don't want to get into those racial issues. They just just about managed to get through, you know, the Black Lives Matter, the Black Lives Matter riots and all that shit in America. Just about managed to squeak through that unharmed. They just don't want to bring any negative attention to themselves. So I understand why they didn't want to do it. But again, you know, I think that I think he could have done the shirt in just a cleverer way. It just didn't need to be so literal like, as, he, as he was trying to do it based on the designs I think he kind of showed. Tremendous memory when somebody finally stops him from profiting of symbols of slavery. Angry face. We want Rob what, one, uh, 1970 to take over the game again. Oh, big up uh, Rob, by the way. I know him. He's the founder of A-Life. Big up Rob. Um, but married to a blonde woman, they say here. Uh, IBCA, someone says here. This is streetwear. Um, Tremendous Supreme was better though. Not rich and famous black person talking about systemic racism. <laughs> to be fair though, that's who should be talking about it. Let's be fair. If you are a rich and famous black person, you should be talking about systemic racism because that's the only way it's going to change when rich and, you know, rich people kind of talk about these sort of issues. That's when things actually change, unfortunately. So I don't find that, I don't think that's a bad thing. Looks like a combo of the design of the Goodfellas one. Bro, all this race shit just played out. Who gives a fuck who does and doesn't like you? Nah, I wouldn't go that far. It's a little bit reductive. Another one says, bro is just trying to make money off race. But that's what he, but is that a bad thing though? Because that's what his brand is. It's just annoying because it's just like, it's the same trick every single time. But because he makes his, you know, his money off race, is that a bad thing? Like other companies make their money off one thing only. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it is what it is. Tremaine was created director of Supreme History. They've only had one in it, so it's not that's a bit unfair. Um, yeah, I don't know about the motivation for this, but the actual messaging itself, presentation, this aside, are tough as fuck. I rock with it. He a nerd. What everyone says here, and that's it, yeah. Some people most people don't really seem to like it, it seems like. But again, will it matter? Probably not. Most people might go out and buy it. Maybe they won't. Let's wait and see how this transpires. Let's wait and see how all this transpires.